So what did exactly you do? Well, in a problem like this, you're going to have to do all of them. So some of them, the main important thing I would do is make sure that I have uh, my equations that have a y and an x. Make sure I put those in slope-intercept form. You guys can see this is not in slope-intercept form. So to do that, I need to subtract an x. So I have y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 2. Now all my equations are either have a variable greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than. All my variables are isolated, or at least my y, at least my y or the x. So do you guys remember when we were graphing y equals and x equals, the best thing I want you guys to remember is treat them like equations. And if you guys remember, if we were, when we were graphing When we were graphing x equals 3, um, x equals 3, what we were talking about was the value of x on the number line was equal to 3. It didn't matter if y was positive, x always equaled 3. It didn't matter if x, y was negative, x always equaled 3. So the line x is equal to something created a vertical line at that value. But now we're talking about inequalities. Well, if it's x is greater than, it's still going to be a line, but now it's going to be a dashed line. And then x is greater than 3. All we want to do is determine what x values are great. Where, where are the x values greater than 3, to the right or to the left? To the right. Now, my recommendation is when you guys are graphing a whole bunch of lines, I recommend just doing some arrows. Okay? You guys can shade all of it, but um, it sometimes can get pretty confusing when you're doing more than two equations. Uh, the next one, y, y is greater than 0. So at y is 0 is right here. Doesn't matter if x is positive, y is equal to 0. Doesn't matter if x is pot, oh, sorry, that is x is negative. Doesn't matter if x is positive, y equals 0. So an x, when y is greater than or equal to 0, that's going to be a solid line. And greater than is going to be y values that are above or below. Above. Now, the next equation might be um, a little bit difficult for people to remember. Remember when we do not have a number in front, that number can be represented as 1. Okay? So when, we are, um, when we're doing something like that, if you want to write the slope, we can write this as y is greater than or equal to negative 1 over 1x minus 2. What that tells you is my y-intercept is negative 2, so I go down to negative 2. Then I follow the slope. I could either go up one to the left one or down one to the right one. You can put the negative in the top or in the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go down one to the right one. And that's greater than or equal to. So that's going to be a solid line. Then that says greater than. So I know that's going to be shading above. All right. And then the last equation is y is equal to 4x, or y is less than 4x. Well, what's the y-intercept for this? Zero, right? It's not there. So there's my y-intercept. And then um, my slope can really be written as 4 over 1. Since it's both positive, that tells me to go up 4 to the right 1. So up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right 1. And since that's going to be less than, that's going to be values below that line. OK. So do you guys see a region that has been true for all of these equations? Yeah, this region is outlined kind of like by here. Basically that region right there. So that is what we call our feasible region. Okay, And that is all the skills you guys need to complete the rest of your focus lesson. And since Mr. McLogan has been so nice to